Rerexine part two. Today is Wednesday. We have until Friday to get that bus sorted. Three days and the job has got to be finished. We've been dead busy since the last video. Since you were last here, we've refitted all the seat frame bolts on the near side and on the off side downstairs, we've taped the Rexine onto the wall ready for gluing. We've also done exactly the same on both long walls on the upper deck. But the biggest challenge we're gonna face and the job that's gonna take the longest is recovering these panels here at the back of the upper deck, all around the lover seat here. And of course, you don't cover just this side of this panel, you actually cover the other side as well, as well as various panels on the back of the bus, either side of the stairway. So, we've got our work cut out over the next three days. Lord Barrington is with us again this week, and somehow I think we've got some late nights coming up between now and the weekend. We decided the first area we tackle would be above the stairs and around the lover's seat. And with the Lord Barrington back with us, it wasn't long before the banter started. What's wrong with my prep? Look, what, what, that's as smooth what, as a what, baby's bum. What, what, what about here, though? Yeah. Well, we, we're not worried, we'll just glue over that, shall we? I spent hours and hours and hours prepping this bus for him. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on, go on. I'm holding uh, on. Hours and hours or just an hour? Weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, I don't know what you were doing for all that time. You must have been working like Rickson. And I've got the videos to prove it. I'm not sure what you were doing, because whatever it was, it wasn't being busy in here. Prep work is, prep work is typical bodger. Oh, if I can get to it with sand, I do it. If sand are not reaching, not happening. Oh dear, oh, I can't get sand in corner, corner. Don't worry about corner when I'm not needing to do corner, you know? It's gonna be okay, and it'll be alright on its own. Be fine. This is video proof that we've been working for what, five minutes, and Dave's already having a fucking brew. Well, don't be saying that, you know, I haven't even touched my brew. But just for the record, our brews are still there. I made it, I can drink it. The pen. The pen. Thank you. Oh, let's see if we can spot on. One cut as well from the back, I suspect. A bit cack handed, really, but. Yeah. Which is effectively what you're just doing. Gotta get that corner roll. 
is once it's once if you do it when it's still really wet, you've got no hope. This is the right size. No. Oh, that's worrying, isn't it? You need to run it around to make sure it's not going to go up and all down, will you? Oh, well, that's going to be straight there because yeah. that's the end of the rod. Theory says if you put your cuts pretty much 90 degrees, do you think you have? I think so, yes. Right, okay. Yeah. You all hope so. It's all a bit too late now. We're going to find out in a minute. If we've got a massive running up, then I blame you for bad cutting skills. I think Dave did a good job. Right? Did he? Yeah, nice size, isn't it? Didn't he do well? Well, there you have it. The job on the stairs and the lover seat is done. And as you've seen, we've used that spray adhesive in this area of the bus. So the big question is, will that spray adhesive hold and will it last more than a couple of years? As you know, people have had problems with it in the past. It just doesn't last. So we might have to do this job again in a couple of years time, but fingers crossed it's going to last an awful lot longer than that. Now, the next part of the project is the tricky one. If you watched the last video, you'll know we had all sorts of problems with the tinned glue that we used on the near side wall on the lower deck. Well, we're going to continue using that tinned glue for the rest of the walls underneath the windows around the rest of the bus. We've still got the offside to do downstairs and the two incredibly long runs all the way along the sides of the upper deck on both sides of the bus. So, will we be able to come up with a solution as to how that glue works best? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's crack on, let's get the job done. And now for the moment of truth. Can we make the tinned glue work with this Rexine? Difficult, just doing the Rexine. Yeah, you're not gonna get... You've got nothing to lean on, have you? Right, I'm gonna try that straight away. I'm not sure what it's gonna do. I'm not sure if that'll be too quick. Just a case of trial and error again, isn't it? How far along are we glued to? About there, there you are. Oh, okay, spot on. Right, that seemed alright, that didn't it? Well, the good news is so far it's going on okay. Maybe our new technique is starting to work. Remember, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Did you mention about subscribing, Dave? I'm not sure if you've mentioned that in this video yet. <laughs> what about getting the likes? Yeah, and yeah, subscribing and liking. If you haven't liked and subscribed, Dave says he's not sure if you've mentioned it yet. Um, but please like and subscribe. I'm doing this up for you. Well, you're not really helping me because you're letting the vaccine fucking drop in the fucking glue. So. Well, just give us a second. Whatever you're fucking you. doing, you ain't helping me. Well, just give us a fucking second. You've got a fucking second. 
I don't think it's quite as bad as the other one. I think it's probably the um, thing I can say that's good. Yeah. Right. I'd love to watch what somebody does that actually manages to get a good finish with this because they clearly know something I don't. See, that's where it starts going from. When you're doing all that vertical stripes, it's going on nice, and then when you drag it across that way, that's when it creates the bumps. Well, there you have it. The job is just about done. And as you can see here on the upper deck, the rec scene has gone on the walls and it looks absolutely great. It just goes to show if you persevere with something, you will get it right eventually. Now, if you watched the last episode where we did have problems putting the rec scene on the wall in the lower deck, you know, we learned from our mistakes there and we've done the rest of the bus to a much higher standard, so I'm over the moon. Now, there's still a whole load of finishing touches that I want to do on this job before we can start putting seat frames back in the bus. As you can see, the seat frame brackets, they've all been sandblasted and resprayed, so they're going to go back on the walls. We just need to find the screw holes underneath the new Rexine. Then when we've done that, the beading needs to go back in. Uh, as does all the trim around the windows and of course we need to get the rivet gun out again and re-rivet all the kick plates back to the side. So still loads of finishing touches to do in the main saloon upstairs and downstairs and there's a whole load of finishing touches that need to be done around the lover seat and the stairs as well. But overall I would say we're probably 99% there. There's just a couple more days worth of finishing touches and this job will be done. So for now you're looking at one very happy bus owner. So, now that the rec scene's on, and it's as good as we can get it, it's time to start putting all the fixtures and fittings back in. Starting with the brackets for the seat frames. So this is the last piece of beading to go back on downstairs in 1214 and then that leads on to refitting seat frames. So let's get this fitted and move on to the next bit. There we go, all done. Now the rec scene is finally done and we can finally at last start putting this bus back together again. There is one extra job I've decided at the last minute that I want to get done and that is before these frames go back on the bus they all need a little bit of attention. The vast majority of the frame is chrome but underneath is painted and the paint is in a terrible state so every single seat frame is going to get sanded down, undercoated and painted in the right colour before they go back on the bus. It's a bit of a nightmare of a job but I think it's got to be done. Whew. Right, there you go. One down, 26 to go. So while I'm doing all the sanding, Alan is busy inside doing the painting. Have you ever started a job and wish you hadn't bothered? Well, that's exactly how I feel right now with these seat frames. Whose idea was it to paint the seat frames before we put them back in the bus? Oh yeah, that'd have been mine. What an idiot. Well, anyway, we're on to the project now, so we can't stop, we can't give up, we've got to crack on. As you can see behind me, all 10 frames from the lower deck, just the lower deck only, 
have been prepped and primed. Now they're ready for top coat. We've not even started prepping or undercoating any of the frames from the upper deck, and there's a lot more seats upstairs than what there is downstairs. So this job is far from over. I wish I hadn't started this job because it's a right pain in the ass. I'm gonna crack on now. I'm gonna get the lower deck finished, and then I'll start on the upper deck. All of this extra effort going into painting these frames when these frames go back on the bus, you're not going to see virtually everything that I'm painting. It's going to be covered by the actual seat cushions. The only bits you'll see are the legs and this back bit here. And you only see that from the seat in front. So is it worth going into all, all this effort for something that's going to be, never be seen again? I'm not sure it is. Maybe I'm just being a miserable old git today. I don't think anybody will ever get on this bus and go, ooh, your seat frames look nice. If they do, I'll probably kiss them. Just when you think you've nearly finished, you spin it round, see it from another angle, and you've realised there's a whole load of it you've missed. See that load, load of mist here? The phone hasn't rung all bloody day. As soon as I get a paintbrush out. All right, I think that's another one done. Get in there slowly. With the frames painted, it was time to put them back on the bus. See that one there? And with all the seat frames secure, the last job was to fit the reupholstered squabs and backs, meaning the lower deck was finally finished. Right, with the downstairs done and looking absolutely fabulous, it is now time to turn our attention to the upper deck. And because the space up here is so much bigger, there is so much more work to do. For instance, downstairs, there was only 10 seat frames that needed prepping and repainting. That took long enough. Up here, there's 17 that need redoing. Now that job is gonna to have to wait for another couple of days because first of all, I'm gonna turn my attention to the work that's needed on the inside of the bus. So the seat frame brackets are gonna go back on, the trim around the windows is gonna go back on and the beading under the windows, they're gonna go back on as well. My first job today though is I'm gonna re-rivet all the kick plates back onto the side of the bus. Now before I start that job, I've got a little question for you. How much do you think these rivets cost. Now these are the rivets that we're using to reattach the beading and the kick plates. If I can just get that in focus. Well, there you go, now it's in focus. How much do you think these rivets cost? Now bearing in mind, I've had to order 250 to do this bus. This is called a model rivet. And let me tell you, I've just paid 86 pounds per 100 for these bad boys. So that makes these 86p each. Oh, and by the way, there was VAT on top of that. So each one of these is over a pound each. That's a ridiculously amount of money, a ridiculously expensive rivet. So it just goes to show that restoring a vintage bus is not a cheap hobby. It is day two of the upper deck rebuild. Got quite a lot done yesterday. Got all the kick plates riveted back on, on the offside, and I managed to get all the lower seat frame brackets on, on both sides of the bus. So today I'm gonna to continue riveting the near side kick plates, and then after that, gonna get the beadings back out and put them in underneath the windows. Another busy day putting this upper deck back together. Everything we do on this bus is just taking a long, long time. Do you notice how I'm tidying up as I go along by putting the shafts in the bucket? Saves a lot of time in the long run doing it this way. Oh, <laughs> missed. Oh. I don't think I'll be able to stand up straight when I've done this. This 
might not look back breaking on a time lapse video, <laughs> but trust me, it is. Gonna get this done and have a cup of tea. Right, now the kick plates on both sides are done, it's time to turn our attention to the beading. Now these beading strips run right the way along the bus, underneath the windows, and if you watched an earlier video when we stripped out the bus, you may remember we actually numbered all the beading strips on the back. So I actually know exactly where these are gonna go back on. So the holes should line up perfectly. The only thing I don't know is whether they go that way around all that way around so that's going to take a little bit of working out and of course before we put the beading strips back on all the trim around the windows that has to go back on as well and I've got to be so careful with this stuff because it's not available anymore it's very brittle so I've got to treat it very carefully because I don't want to snap any There you go, sits nicely above the new rec scene. Right, so this is upper near side number one. Then if you can see that, UN1 it says there. So that means this was the first strip on the upper near side of the bus. And here we are on the upper deck on the near side, number one from the front, then two, three and four as we go towards the back of the bus. So I'm gonna punch the holes in the rec scene, punch the holes on the walls, and line them up. I don't know whether it goes this way around or whether I need to spin it 180 degrees. Let's give it a whirl. This job is so much easier with two people. Tim's not here today. He's gone on holiday. He wasn't here yesterday, you may have noticed as well. Do you know where he's gone? He's gone to the Lake District to ride on a steamship. Thanks, Tim. How dare he have a holiday? Right. Line up. Holes all lined up, and because I'm on my own, I'm going to put the first three in the middle first, and then that'll be easier than starting from one end and working all the way along. You gotta be so careful you don't slip with the rivet gun when, when it snaps the shaft. Otherwise you scratch all your lovely new rex in. Right, there you go. First one done. Three more to do down the uh, near side. Okay, last beading strip on the near side going on. It's amazing what difference the beading strip makes. What a lovely little finishing touch. Makes it look so good upstairs. So that is the near side done. Just got the off side to do. And then the upstairs is then ready for the seat frames. Once we've painted them, of course.
Well, as you can see, the job is finally done. And it took so much longer than I was expecting. But hey, we got there in the end. It just shows if you persevere with something, you will get it right eventually. And as you can see, despite the problems we had with the glue, the Rexine does look stunning. It really does finish the inside of this bus off perfectly. I love the way it looks around the stairs and the rear blind box. And I think I made the right decision when I decided not to rip off the Rexine from the lower deck when it didn't go on as planned. And if you've been following all our episodes here on YouTube, you may recall in an earlier video, I was explaining the difference between the new Rexine and the original style Rexine, and how because of the manufacturing process, the new Rexine doesn't have that smell. That smell I remember traveling on these buses as a child when I was at school. Well, I'm so pleased that the original style Rexine that we used on the beading strips is enough to give the bus that original smell. Every time I get on this bus now, I can smell that Rexine, and it's just a wonderful smell that takes me all the way back to my teenage years traveling on these buses to and from school. And that unfortunately is the end of this video. I'd like to say a big thank you to Lord Barrington. He made two trips up from London to help us with the re-Rexine. Also Tim, yeah, he's back from holiday. Gary, Chubbs and Alan also spent many, many hours on the inside of this bus, so thank you guys. And thank you to you for watching. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumb, give us a like, and if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes. Now, talking of future episodes, what's next for this bus? Well, there's one more hurdle she's got to jump before she can enter passenger service with us again, and that is she needs to pass an MOT. Now all the cosmetic work is done, we are turning our attention to the mechanicals. We've not lifted this bus and had a good look underneath since pretty much the day we bought her. So that's going to be the next video. We're going to prep this bus and present her for MOT. And as long as she passes that, she'll be entering service within the month. So we can't wait for that. That'll be the next video. Until then, thank you again for watching. From me and everybody on the team, bye-bye. Oh.